Hello again everybody and welcome back to Make Light on YouTube. Today I thought it would be really fun to share with you one of my very favourite things and that is photographing flowers. <laughs> anybody who follows me on Instagram will know how much I love photographing flowers. I've been photographing flowers for a about 10 years, maybe more now. Um, yes, about 11 years um, now, at least once a week. And over the past uh, two or three years, um, several times a week, sometimes every day. Um, I absolutely love, love, love photographing flowers. Um, I love getting to know flowers, getting to know the details, the colors that will photograph well. Um, they make me feel happy. Um, I know that my Im taking the images makes me happy. I know that seeing the images makes other people happy. So it's one big um, bubble of happiness for me. Um, so I absolutely love it. And I thought it would be fun to tell you what I take my pictures with. Um, and also talk to you today about um, a seasonal flower that's um, in season at the moment in the UK, um, which is hydrangea. Um, hydrangea have a really um, long flowering period, but right now they are just amazing for cutting and bringing in to your house and drying them. This one's all dried. Um, and drying them ready um, to keep your home looking all lovely throughout winter when we don't have so many flowers. Um, and I also love making a Christmas. I shouldn't really mention that word just yet, but I love making a Christmas wreath with them every year. So I love having them, drying them, saving them for my Christmas wreath and using them every year. But I also really, really love, I'll try and show you these little ones here. I really, really love um, drying them in individual little petals like that um, and using them in my photography. Um, I will share some images uh, on my blog today um, of what I do with these petals for you and if you also if you look in my Instagram stream you'll see little um, hydrangea petals pop up all the time. I love to dry them and then use them all year round um, either on their own or as lovely little additions to flat lays. So I love taking images of flowers with my iPhone. <laughs> I use an iPhone 6 and the camera on there takes really amazing close-ups, probably much closer up than you think, so have a go. Um, and I just love it. I love what it does with flowers. It's brilliant. But I also do really, really love um, using my Canon um, 5D um, digital SLR. Um, and my very, very favourite lens. Um, I think it's my favourite lens in all the world <laughs> because um, it's what I use to take pretty much all my floral images that I do on my SLR. So it's, um, I use a Canon. So I have, this is a Canon 50mm macro 2. f2.5. Um, and it's a little bit battered because it's been I've been using it for the past 11 years um, and it's quite dusty. I shouldn't admit to that, but it is quite dusty. Um, it's even got a little bash just there, um, but I adore it. It's like my best friend lens. <clears throat> um, yeah, I just, I really, really love that lens. Um, I do have a 100mm macro, which is a much bigger lens. Um, it's much heavier and I can't quite get um, as close. I can get closer to the flowers, but I can't sort of get as close myself to the flowers. And I actually really love and enjoy um, being kind of right in close into the flowers um, and really in the moment of taking the picture. So you might like um, to use a 100mm lens, but I love the 50mm lens and it does, nearly always does exactly what I want. I rarely feel that I wanted to go closer into an image than I can get with a 50mm. So that is my favourite lens for taking pictures of flowers with. Um, and you can take not just close-ups with it, but you can take images of vases of flowers um, on a table, for example, with that lens as well. And it's really, really lovely. Um, you can get beautiful bokeh with it. Um, by that I mean the lovely blurry bits um, in an image, you know, when something's in focus and then the background's all blurry and it looks really lovely. Um, you can do that with it because it goes down as low as 2.5. So I really, really love that lens. So 
Um, as I was saying, I love taking pictures of these little petals. So I love to cut up my hydrangea and then dry these petals individually and then creating an image with the petals. So not just focusing on the whole flower itself, but focusing on the details um, when they're broken up and dried. So you can carry on taking pictures of those and practicing with them for like months and months, even years, you can probably keep them. As long as they don't get dusty, um, then the dried petals will, will last for ages. So I love that. And I have the sweetest little tin. <laughs> The little tiny weeny baking tin and I love oh, photographing them in the tin. Um, it's a beautiful background, it's a bit like the, the larger tin that I showed you last week um, makes a beautiful background, so does this tiny tin, it's really really lovely. Um, and things like lace, little bits of lace, um, ribbons, um, little boxes, um, all sorts of things like that. Um, go beautifully with the tiny petals and the tiny details and really thinking about colour com combinations with your flowers. I think um, an image of flowers can easily be ruined by what it's placed with um, so really pay attention to the flowers and the colours that you're using, the, the colours that you have in your flowers. So when I take a picture of a hydrangea it's quite a big um, head of a flower that's quite a big flower so I might want to just simply take a picture of one hydrangea um, stem and not lots together um, lots together are beautiful as well um, but you can get a beautiful picture from just one um, as a flower sometimes you need a few more to make an image but I think that you can create a really lovely image with just one hydrangea bloom and then you could take an image of that um, in a vase, in your favourite vase, or you could cut it down a bit and take it in a little cup, vintage teacup, for example. Um, and as it dries, it will change colour. So um, the colours will start to fade a bit, um, and then you can create um, another image with it um, as the colours change, which is really lovely. Um, they kind of get lighter this one's got quite quite a lot lighter so, although sometimes they get darker but isn't that amazing you can every time it's a little bit of a surprise a little bit of an unknown and that's what I really love about watching these flowers dry and seeing what else and I've got loads of lovely colors on this one I've got some purpley bits here and this side is more red rich and red so you could cut um, lots of these little ones off this one if you wanted to and you would have a whole range of um, colours to put into your image which I think is really really beautiful. Um, I also really love, I don't really want to do it with this one, um, maybe I'll do it with this one here. Um, I also, I've got one that I've done, I've done already but here we go. <laughs> um, I really love starting to pull them, pull them apart and then taking an image of a smaller piece. So you started with your bigger piece and then your smaller piece and you can even, you can make them even smaller than this so you can break it again. And that is a really beautiful piece of hydrangea that you can take a more delicate image with um, in, in itself. You don't have to cut those up, but then from that, <laughs> then you could go to that. Um, so you can get so many different photographs from one flower. I think they're just so amazing. And I could, um, and do, take loads and loads of photographs of hydrangea. And obviously, before they've even been cut, um, if you have them, in, lucky enough to have them in your garden, um, or you often see them in parks, botanical gardens, other people's front gardens. Um, uh, so taking pictures of them, on the, on the plant itself is lovely as well. Um, it's another lovely thing to do to sort of start your flower journey um, images. I really love to take as many images as I can of, flower, of a flower um, from either seeing it out there growing or seeing it in my local florist um, and taking a picture of it there or in the park um, and or in my garden. <laughs> and then I love to take a picture of of one um, in a vase and then um, and then kind of watch that flower 
how it changes. Um, you know, some flowers open, um, hydrangeas don't open, they are as they are, um, but they will change colour and dry. Um, and so they have different qualities as they go through a week or a few weeks to dry. Sometimes they, this one's still not quite dry and, and I've had it for ages. Um, which is lovely, a nice treat. <laughs> um, and yeah, you can, and then I, for example, with the hydrangea, um, cut it down and then cut it down even more. So there are so many different combinations of images that you can get from one flower. And I think that's amazing. Um, when I am, if you want a bit of technical stuff, <laughs> um, when I am taking images of these tiny ones, these tiny weeny ones, then I will definitely be shooting in aperture priority mode at um, f2.5. Um, if I wanted an image of lots of them together and I wanted to get a little bit more of a um, bigger depth of field, a lot uh, deeper depth of field, then I might go up to 5.6. But with flowers, unless I'm taking a bouquet, in which case I need a, um, an even bigger aperture, um, then I don't, I very rarely go above 5.6. I, to be honest, I very rarely go above 3.5 when I'm shooting flowers because I want to, um, I want to get to the detail of the flower and then the rest have that beautiful bokeh effect. I don't really want everything in focus. Um, it gives a, just a more beautiful portrait of a flower. So there we go. And also I love taking them on my iPhone, <laughs> which you've probably seen um, over the last few weeks um, on my Instagram stream. I think particularly last week, there were lots of hydrangea um, images going on there. Um, they make me really happy. And they also remind me of my dear um, grandmother who had them in her garden when I was a child. And I always remember, I thought, they, I think she had blue ones, if I remember rightly, um, which I thought was quite interesting. They kind of looked, um, well, sort of like sweeties or something. Do you get blue sweeties? No. But you know that kind of candy colour. Um, and I just thought they were really fun and interesting. And they always will always remind me of her, which is a lovely thing. So when I'm taking my photographs and in my, in my kind of meditative moment of taking my images, um, I'm thinking of her, which is lovely. So I hope that's given you some ideas for photographing hydrangea um, and drying them as well and, and having them in your home over the winter months. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Bye.